One of the greatest challenges facing owners, operations leaders, and supply chain professionals is inventory control. Too much of this, not enough of that, and items that have been sitting on the warehouse shelves so long that they are unsellable. Hello, I'm Tracy Smith, the president of Numerical Insights. This video is a continuation of my series on how to use data to transform and manage your business. I'd like to help reduce your frustration and stress of managing inventory by showing you how to use inventory and sales data to understand inventory usage and to plan inventory purchases. Inventory has already cost you money to produce or purchase. Hence, it is either a source of revenue or an expense item. A better understanding leads to better decisions of what inventory to buy, when to buy it, and how much to purchase. The most important concepts to understand about inventory are that until it is sold, inventory is an expense. Inventory takes up physical space in your factory or warehouse, and inventory that isn't selling quickly is taking up space that could be used for faster moving products. The conversion of cash to inventory was shown in a previous video. If you're not familiar with that challenge, feel free to view the video called Understanding the Cash Flow Gap to learn how inventory restricts a business's available cash. The goal of inventory management is to minimize the amount of inventory in stock while ensuring that items are available when a customer wants to purchase them. Trying to predict customer demand of the items you sell is one of the biggest challenges associated with inventory management. What information can you look at to determine how much inventory to carry? First, you should understand the shape of the demand curve for what you sell. Are you selling something with a seasonal demand or something that isn't seasonal? A seasonal product would be something like winter clothing. It has a few months in which sales are very popular. If you look at the blue curve on the screen, you will see a time frame in which sales are substantially higher than during the rest of the year. As an example of something that isn't seasonal, let's consider black socks. Products that aren't seasonal sell all year long with fluctuating sales week by week, but they don't show a time frame where sales have a substantial increase or decrease. The curve may look something like the orange curve on the screen. For seasonal products, the demand curve, which I'll plot as the number of items sold each week, will look something like what's on my screen. The challenge here is knowing how many weeks or months the high volume season will last, how fast it will increase at the start of the season, and how fast it will drop off at the end of the season. If you don't obtain inventory fast enough at the start, you will be out of stock for customer orders and you will lose sales. If you don't decrease the inventory to match the end of the curve, which has a downward slope, you risk being stuck with inventory that doesn't sell. In our example, we are purchasing finished goods to resell. An important planning consideration is the lead time from our suppliers. If your business produces products from raw materials, lead times from your suppliers and the time it takes to manufacture your products from raw materials are important planning considerations. Without careful planning, inventory that doesn't sell during the peak season continues to tie up cash. You may have to wait until next year for another opportunity to sell your stock of that item in order to release that cash, or if the item is obsolete by then, you may have to write off that inventory. Writing off inventory is a loss to your business and impacts your profitability. For our black socks example, we may not have a seasonal increase, but our demand for that item will still vary week by week, and in reality, we see differing demands across sock sizes and geographical locations. I'll show you an example of analyzing different sizes of an item in a moment. While we may have a long history of data on this item, it will still vary year by year as consumer brand preferences change and as economic indicators such as inflation rates, the consumer price index, and unemployment rates change. These economic factors impact consumer purchasing levels. Let's look at some real data to see what we can learn about our products. On the screen, I have created a dashboard to show the rate at which each item has sold over the past several weeks for a company that sells finished goods. 
The calculation for the rate is simply the quantity sold during the time period divided by the number of days in that time period, which gives us a rate in terms of the number of units sold per day. Additionally, I have data on the number of units currently in stock for each item. Based on the rate and the number of units on the shelf in the warehouse, I can calculate the number of days of inventory that I have. For example, if this data was on our winter jacket sales, and I have been selling them at a rate of 100 per day, and I have 700 in stock, then I have seven days worth of inventory in my warehouse. Of course, this assumes that I will continue to sell winter jackets at the same rate each day. However, we know that this item is seasonal and the rate will increase at the start of our seasonal demand curve and it will decrease at the end of our seasonal demand curve. This is where analytics and human judgment come together to improve our unit sales forecast. If we are on the increasing side of the curve, our calculated rate will underestimate our demand and we may run out of stock so our human judgment may decide to order more inventory than the current rate indicates. On the other hand, if we are on the downward side of our demand curve, our rate may overestimate our real demand and we risk ordering too much inventory. Our human judgment may decide to order less inventory than our current rate indicates. To get a better idea about the rate at which this curve may increase and decrease and the length of our season, we can look at data from a previous year when we sold this item or a similar item. In the dashboard you see on the screen, the time frame can be changed to view last year's sales. In this chart, we can see when the winter jacket season began last year and the weekly sales volumes. In this particular case, the company managed to sell jackets from October to February, and the sales volumes this year can be compared to last year to fine-tune the predicted value of the anticipated unit sales. In this section, I'll fulfill my promise of discussing the situation of carrying multiple sizes of a product. Suppose you are a company that distributes liquor, and for each type of liquor you sell, you offer seven sizes. In looking at your data, you notice that customers primarily buy the three mid-range sizes of your product. In this situation, you may decide to migrate customers from the lower volume sizes to the popular sizes by suggesting an alternate size to them. This reduces the number of items you need to stock in your warehouse and can reduce the amount of cash tied up in inventory. Additionally, in this real world example, we can see that some of the lower volume sizes are also less profitable as shown by their gross margin percent. Before you make a decision to eliminate a size, however, there are additional factors to consider. For more details on reducing product complexity and what to consider, you can view the video in the series called How to Increase Your Profit with Product Rationalization. Strategies to reduce inventory levels and complexity often require a methodical item-by-item -item analysis, which takes time, but remember that any opportunity to reduce inventory frees up cash for the business to use elsewhere. The time spent analyzing each item for volume, profitability, and customer associations can be well worth the investment of time. Predicting inventory needs is not as simple as most people think when they choose to open a business selling finished goods or manufacturing products. No one person or organization can predict inventory perfectly but a combination of data analysis and experience with product categories can go a long way to improve your inventory planning. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to press like and subscribe. Click the notification bell to receive a message when new videos are released. You can also explore the other videos in this series or visit our website for more information on how to use data analysis to improve your business.